Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm back here at Walker Ford in sunny Clearwater, Florida, because guess what? Look what I have tracked down once again. We have the all new 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. Now, yes, this is the smaller of the two Broncos, but that is Ford's plan to bring out this one first and then later bring out the 4x4 version, which is the bigger brother. But before we dive into this Bronco Sport, also affectionately being called the Baby Bronco, let's talk about what's going on here. The Bronco name, such a historic SUV before SUVs were even a thing. Originated in the 1960s, it developed into many different formats, but you know what, eventually it disappeared. And we all know why, I don't need to bring that up, but you know what, the big news is it's back and it's better than ever because there's gonna be a Bronco for everybody. You have your Bronco Sport, but you're also gonna have that bigger Bronco 4x4. No matter which way you cut it, no matter which way you slice it, no matter which way you look at it, both of them are gonna be off-road capable SUVs. Now this does fall into the subcompact crossover SUV class, which you're gonna see other vehicles like the Hyundai Kona, the Mazda CX-30, the Kia Seltos, just to name a few. But what the Bronco Sport is bringing is not only one heck of an off-road muscular look, but also you're getting standard 4x4 capability. Now, with some different options, with some different trims, we have a Badlands Edition. There are others. You could go higher, you could go lower, but I think what you're gonna be amazed about is that you're gonna have a Bronco for everybody. So let's go ahead, let's dive into this Bronco Sport and see is it the ultimate when it comes to a small off-road SUV. Right off the bat, I love the proportions of it. Until I actually saw it in person, I was a little bit on the fence, but they really nailed the shape and overall layout. It doesn't look like a subcompact SUV, but starting at the front of the business, I think it was smart to go with a massive headlight housing. If you look at some of the competition, they have really tiny headlights, especially like the CX-30, which they look good, but for some reason, going with the bigger headlight housing makes the appearance of the vehicle appear to be a little bit larger. So you're gonna get your LED daytime running lamp, you got your projector beam style headlight, LED turn singles, and everything else is blacked out in there. I'm really digging this gunmetal metallic flat gray that they use for the grill, and it also goes around the headlight housing. You drop down, you can see we have Oxford white, very, very bright white. You're gonna have your also very bright LED fog lamps down below, flat black, I think is smart because this will take a better beating over time. You're gonna get those necessary tow hooks to help pull out those lesser small SUVs that get stuck. And then as we come across that grill, it's very 21st century, but it's also classic all at the same time. And now I know why Ford took a little bit longer bringing this to market is because not only do they have a Bronco for everybody, but the design is really well played out. I love the open area in the bottom. You actually, on this Badlands trim, have a forward-facing camera that's gonna allow you to see the terrain in front of you. Maybe there's a pile of Twinkies in front of you and you don't wanna run them over. Use that forward-facing camera or you're gonna squirt cream. You're gonna waste cream and just squirt it everywhere. Now, my only zonk is I wish they did not block off this top portion. It's only the bottom portion which is open, but I can understand it's about maximizing airflow and sometimes by having a little bit smaller area, you actually generate better airflow at speed. So I get it, I get it. You do have massive openings here that are fully functional. Remember, your two engine options are gonna be turbocharged engines, which means you're gonna have an intercooler and that will be hiding behind here. But you can see very, very nice straight lines with the bumper area and the way that it curves, it gives us some maximum ground clearance. You're looking at over eight inches of ground clearance on this baby Bronco. Now, when you go up onto the hood, I love the way the hood meets nicely with the grill. Very bold body lines. That gives it that nice muscular off-road look. And if you're wondering, well, what's under the hood? You're actually going to have a couple choices when it comes to engines. You're going to have, both are going to be EcoBoost engines. So what that means is standard is going to be a 1.5 liter EcoBoost turbocharged three-cylinder, 181 horsepower, 190 pound-feet of torque. The optional one is gonna be a two-liter EcoBoost turbocharged inline four, 245 horsepower, 275 pound-feet of torque. Both of them are mated to eight-speed automatics. Now, when you go with the two-liter EcoBoost, you are getting that eight-speed select shift automatic with 
a transmission cooler, which is great. And the wonderful news, like I said, four by four, so you're gonna have full terrain management system, slippery sand and mud ruts, independent front and rear suspension. And then of course you have a trail control system, which is going to really allow you to access those places on the many adventures that you're gonna go with your friends and family, that lesser compact or subcompact SUVs are not even gonna be able to make it. Now, when we come around the bend, what are we working with wheel and tire? The last time I showed this, there was a lot of people frustrated. They said, wow, those wheels look like steelies. Well, guess what? It's a simulated steely looking wheel. This is a standard wheel. You do have optional wheels, so you don't have to go with this simulated steely. It is gunmetal just like the grill color you could have you see that nice bronco logo i like the center cap very very tasteful and whoever designed that bronco i want to buy them a twinkie and give them a high five because they did a great job capturing the classic look and also the 21st century 17 inch wheel and then you're going to have a meaty super meaty like a like a triple stack whopper or maybe even a big mac this is like a big mac size sidewall that's going to give you a nice ride 235 on the width 65 series sidewall you can see the amount of room that we have from the top of the tire inside of the fender you can see the suspension bits lurking behind and like i said standard four by four system i think it was smart the way they took the flat black brought it around the fender treatment it's not like the cx30 where they brought it all the way up to the hood they kept it nice and slim all the way around now there is another zonk i need to point out i'm not digging this fake vent it's for decoration. It would have been nice just to have it functional to kind of draw some hot air out. I do like the Badlands badge. That's going to get, I know, going to be a very popular trim that people are going to go with. You're going to have flat black on the mirror caps, flat black on that side sill. And what's crazy is the way they developed the side sill and designed it, it almost looks like a frame rail protector when you're going rock crawling. It's not, but it looks really, really purposeful and super sticking with that muscular off-road look. Now, when it comes to the roof, I love the two-tone. Going the two-tone kind of trims it down a little bit. So you're gonna have your painted black on the A-pillar going into our almost flat roof. And the reason why I say it's almost flat, for about halfway it's flat, and then it actually raises a little bit as it goes towards the rear. This makes it look like a Land Rover Defender. And that's actually a compliment. This looks like a baby Land Rover Defender with its body lines. We have a cargo basket up top, but of course you could get a ton of accessories to put up there. The great news is the way they designed this back area, when you put the seats down, you could actually put two full-size mountain bikes back there on the inside. Plus you could bring a bunch of Twinkies. So it's a win, 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 win situation. Flat black on the bottom and top, a little bit of gloss as we work our way towards the rear. The one, another area I'm kind of I'm zonking, and you can see the swirl marks. There's a lot of gloss black plastic in this back area. I wish they would have trimmed it down a little bit because the shape of the quarter window is really great. If they actually would have just trimmed it down, say about here, and just had, kept that same cut, I think it would just look a lot cleaner, but nice rise up into this rear section. And then as we come to the rear, I'm glad they went with raised roof rails rather than those flush mount ones. Gives it that more off-road bowl look. Outback, I'm not talking about Subaru Outback. I ah, gotcha. Talking about out at the backside, the tail end of the business. You are gonna be able to raise this glass. You see the hinges? You push the button and this is gonna raise up. I am zonking that though. They should've went with a shark fin antenna, but I love the nice clean lines. You got your white Bronco Sport badging the Ford badge kind of over to the side and you can see where we could open our glass and open the door. Rear facing camera for, for when you're backing up and then as we drop down, you're still gonna get that flat black to wrap it all the way around. No tailpipe, no muffler, nothing hanging down. You can tow up to 3,500 pounds. You're gonna have that towing capability. But boy oh boy, did they do a great job to the exterior now. The one piece of bad news that I have is that we can't get to the interior yet. There's actually an embargo for media like myself, and we're not able to show that until around December. So we will be bringing that to you eventually sometime, but guess what? Keep your fingers crossed. We hope that will happen. But as we come around the bend, we're going to have Lori kind of work, work some of her, her movie magic here, her camera magic, and showcase the interior the best that we can. Now, what you're looking at is a nice thick rimmed 
leather wrap steering wheel. I really, really think that they did a great job on the wheel design. It looks like a wheel out of the Ford Escape, to be honest with you, but that's okay. You got an analog tack, analog speedometer. Every Bronco Sport is getting that eight inch infotainment system. You can see how they positioned it, easy to get to. I'm digging the style of the AC vents. On the center console, you'll see a knob there. Obviously you have a rotary style knob for the transmission. And you also have another knob that's going to control that terrain management system. And that's going to allow you to be able to have trail control system, which is cruise control up to 20 miles an hour when you're off road. And then there's over a hundred different approved accessories for the Bronco Sport. I'm going to have her swing around and show the backs of the front of the seats. Well, actually the front of the front seats where you have the Bronco beautiful embroidery. I love that nice light brown Alcantara microfiber suede material, the darker leather, fully perfor perforated. And that's going to be the big question. What kind of options can you put into this Bronco Sport? Will there be ventilated seats? Obviously, heated seats is, is going to be one of those things, but it's going to be interesting to see, will you be able to option in ventilated seats? Ours does have uh, dual climate control, which is nice. And how everything is laid out, from what I can see right now, looks like it's been well developed, even for the smaller size. Now, the way this is going to work is that Walker Ford has their order in for their particular units. That's going to get built in November. So you're probably going to start to see Bronco Sports showing up at your local dealership or here at Walker Ford sometime around end of December, maybe beginning of January, depending on how close to Michigan you are. Now, if you're wondering, well, Joe, when are we going to get the Bronco 4x4? That's not going to probably hit dealerships until end of February going into March. But that was the original plan. They wanted to bring the Bronco Sport first, then wrap it off with the Bronco 4x4. And that's the one I know many of you are really, really excited for because that's going to be main competition for the Jeep Wrangler. But boy, oh boy, I'm so glad that we were able to take a little bit more time, talk about some Twinkies. There's definitely some great Twinkie storage in there. And I'm sure if you like your Chipotle burritos, you're going to be able to get extra guac times two. So pay the extra times two and you'll even have more burrito because there's definitely tons of room in those door pockets. But if you want to keep seeing these vehicles that you can't even get yet at your dealership, Leave a comment in that comment section. If you're new and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile coming back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. If you want to help us keep making great content just for you and the channel, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radius Rise merch. Got to give it up to the queen of the camera, my wonderful wife, Lori, out here in the sun, getting it done, having some fun. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. So thank you, sweetheart, for all that you do. Show her some love in the comment section. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.